let's try out Ali Abdal's plugin called Firecut AI to see if it's any good. So Firecut AI is a plugin for Premiere Pro that basically aims to simplify all of the boring tasks that you have to do as an editor, which is automatically removing silences and filler words. It also includes adding automatic zooms in time-coded chapters to your video and even transcribing your videos and my favorite part adding animating captions to your video which is really easy to do now i've put time-coded chapters below if you want to review any section at any time but basically in this video i'm going to review the pros and the cons of using the plugin and compare it to some of premiere pro's already built-in features so that way you can decide if this plugin is worth it for you all right, let's go ahead and jump on in. Now I'm going to test out each tool in the order that I would actually use them to build a rough cut, starting off with removing silences. And if you wanna follow along, you can use my affiliate link down below to get a 14 day free trial. Here I have this A-roll footage from another video in my timeline here. And normally I'd have to go through this whole thing and cut out all the unnecessary parts myself. But let's see if this plugin can get me to a better starting point. Once you have Firecut AI installed, you can can go up to Windows Extensions and click Firecut. And now we can pick Remove Silences. Now, starting from the top here, there are two tabs. There's Basic and Advanced. With Basic, you have a slider to choose how tight you want the cuts to be and some other options as well, like choosing which audio track to focus on. Now let's hit go. After processing, it took my video from eight minutes down to around five minutes and 46 seconds. So looking through the video after the cut, I can say that Firecut did a pretty good job for being an AI, but it is a little bit loose for my liking. And there are a few errors that occur. For example, if I speak too quietly, Firecut will cut off the sentence too short. All right, let's hope that the audio... Okie dokie. But jumping over to this advanced tab here, you can see that there's no more slider. And that's because with this advanced mode, you can start analyzing your audio here, which only took a few seconds. And now we have plenty of options. For example, I can fix that weird cutoff problem here just by adjusting the silence threshold. And here you can even see the amount of cuts that change in real time. You also get more settings like the minimum silence duration, padding, and even J cuts. And basically what that means is that this tool can automatically set off the audio of this next cut to come in earlier to create a J cut. And down here below, you can see how many silences were found and even go through all of them to make sure you're getting the result you want. If you disagree with any of these, just hit X to delete it. And once you're ready, hit go. And the plugin will start to make the cuts and after about 30 seconds, it's done. Using the advanced options, I definitely got better results and we got J cuts added. Start with something simple yet powerful. Okay, the beat impact effect is great. Now, I personally wouldn't use the J-Cut feature because I think having it at every single clip is a little bit too much for my liking, but it is a good option to have. So I know that Premiere Pro has a built-in text panel that will automatically transcribe your video for you. And it comes with a pause removal, which is similar to the silence remover. So this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't test it out to compare it for you. So what's great about Premiere is that you can automatically start transcribing your video first, which is a bit faster than Firecut. And then you can select all the pauses and hit delete all. And then Premiere will instantly ripple delete all of these silences. The only option here is changing the minimum pause length. So if you're looking for more flexibility, I would say Firecut is the way to go. And it's interesting too that Premiere seemed to remove also when I coughed in a video up in the effect tab. <clears throat> and that's because Premiere is basically removing unidentifiable speech. It's not removing silences, but more like pauses. And by the way, I'm Kelsey. If you want to become better at video editing, you are in the right place. And if this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe.
Also, my team and I developed a toolkit plugin for Premiere Pro called the Premiere Gal Toolkit, which includes over 1200 different effects, transitions, overlays, sound effects, and more. Editors are loving it. It's the new hit plugin on the market to help you spice up your videos. I'm going to tell you more about it later on, but for now, let's get back into FireCut's filler word removal. So the filler word removal aims to remove all of those ums and uhs from your sequence. So I'm going to continue with the sequence that we went through for the silence remover. So in this tool, you don't have a whole lot of options. So in this case, I'm just going to pick the right audio track and then hit analyze audio. After taking about one minute to scan, you can see that FireCut only found one um in this whole sequence. 720p clip, you can use uh, now, this isn't bad by any means. It's just going through the sequence. We actually found that there really was only just one um that I said. But you know, I'm a seasoned professional. I've been doing this for six years. I actually train myself to not say filler words because I know it's a pain to edit out. But if you are dealing with somebody that's inexperienced on camera, you'll probably get a lot more ums and uhs that come up when using this. So of course we have to compare it to Premiere Pro's new filler word removal, which is available from version 24.1 and above. If you go to the text panel transcription settings, you can actually view the filler words, but we ran the same sequence with the filler word removal and Premiere Pro didn't find any ums or uhs. So it just goes to show that FireCut did find that one um that I said and Premiere Pros didn't. The next tool that's really cool that Premiere Pro doesn't have is removing repetitions. And basically this can help you tighten up the transcript. Let's say somebody says the same thing multiple times. You can select the ones that you wanna keep and remove the repetitions. I know with my own videos, I'll often say my intro like five to 10 times, although I still recommend watching them to get that cadence and delivery because you might wanna splice multiple parts together. But with FireCut, if you're on a time crunch, this can help you remove the repetitions faster. So I'm excited to test this out right now because if it works well, it's gonna save a lot of time. So here in the remove repetition tool, you can choose between basic and advanced. Let's just use the advanced mode to see all of the options. Click detect repetition. And after waiting 30 seconds, we get this pretty well-designed UI. Here we can adjust the minimum phrase size, tolerance, which if we set to zero, will only detect sentences that are exactly the same and the search radius. So what I love here is that I'm able to see the whole script with the repeated parts highlighted. And if we adjust any of these sliders here, the changes will be reflected in real time, which I love. Once you're ready, you can hit preview and choose best takes. In this page, you can click to see each take and hit the check mark on the take that you want. And this is important, right? Because you still have to worry about cadence and delivery. On paper, a take might look good, but for example, the previous take was a little bit more upbeat and happier and you wanna use that take. So I really love this feature because you can see it before you delete it. So hit the check mark on the one that you want here and FireCut will ripple delete the other takes for you. And ripple delete just means, you know, deleting and then removing the gaps in between, kind of like a magnetic timeline. Now, all of this seems wonderful on paper, but when you go through the takes here, you can see that the in and out points aren't placed that well. The beat impact effect is great for transitions or spicing up a boring shot. I really wish there was a way to manually fix the in and out points of all of the take because right now it's just really not worth the time to have to go through and manually fix everything afterwards. Now I did share this feedback with the FireCut team and they're aware of this and they're working on a fix to make it smoother and less manual. So once you're done with removing the silences, the filler words and the repetition tool, you're in a pretty good place to start doing your own cuts to finish up the assembly. Once done, let's spice up this edit with some add zooms. Now this tool automatically adds zooms to emphasize words based on what is being spoken. Let's see how well it works. So inside of this tool, you got a few options. Let's bump up the frequency to keep the video interesting. Down in the zoom style here, you can choose if you want the zooms to be animated or not. And if there's no animation, that just means it's like a quick jump in. You can change the duration and scale. For me, I'll have it zoom in just a bit more. After waiting about 30 seconds for FireCut to add the zooms to this five minute sequence, 
it's now done. And you'll see that a bunch of adjustment layers were added for when the zooms happen. Now going through them, there's a lot of spots where I agree with the zoom choices, but there are plenty more that seem a bit random. But overall, I think this is pretty useful, especially if you're editing a podcast that has a quick turnaround. It's a great starting point just to quickly add in those zooms that you can then refine later. So the only missing feature here that's preventing me from using this tool on my current videos is the option to select where it's zooming to. Right now, all of the zooms go straight into the center, which is fine, but I like to have my head on the top of the rule of thirds line. So I would prefer to be able to have the zooms go up to my face instead. And of course, this may not be an issue depending on how you're filming your talking head. So it's something to consider looking into when you are filming your videos. If you wanna be able to use this tool, you need to remember the framing of your shot so it will work nicely with the add zooms feature. Another useful tool in FireCut is add chapters, which will detect chapters based on what you're saying in the video. So inside the tool here, there isn't much right off the bat, but let's just hit detect chapter and wait for a few seconds. After it's done, you'll get a list of chapters and it's surprisingly accurate. You might get some unwanted chapters here, but you can just hit X to easily get rid of them. Once you're satisfied with the chapters, you can get three options. Copy timestamps. This will copy the text and you can just paste it into your description box on YouTube, which is really useful. Now I would recommend generating these chapters once your full edit is done, of course, not beforehand. Otherwise you can use chapters as kind of a map so you can kind of see what's going on in your timeline and then edit from those chapters. But I think the copy timestamps is great, especially if you publish to YouTube. And add markers will simply add the chapters as markers to your timeline. And the most interesting option is add clips. And this will create an animated title card for you for each chapter. You can choose the text color, toggle the gradient up here before you hit add clips. And if you don't like the font or text color, you can change it in the essential graphics panel. But as you can see, the options are pretty limited. I would love to see more options for this, such as a background change or a different animation style. Now adding zooms and chapters is getting your video one step closer to being more interesting. But if you want it to be as spicy as possible, look no further than the Premiere Gal Toolkit. With my toolkit, you not only get some great handheld camera movements in title animations, but over 1200 effects, transitions, motion graphics, and so much more. And my toolkit is neatly organized inside of the AdMX panel, which you can open and close inside of Premiere Pro at any time. There's no need to worry about dragging in different effects into the project. It's just always there. The best part about the toolkit is that it's very easy to use. Any of these effects can be added directly into your timeline just by simply double clicking or drag and dropping. And once it's added, you can customize it to your heart's content. And the best part is you only have to pay once and you own my toolkit forever with guaranteed updates included. Be sure to check out the link in the description box if you're interested in my toolkit and thanks to myself for sponsoring this segment. All right, now let's get back into FireCut. The multi-track tool can literally edit a podcast with a click of a button. Here I have two clips from my interview with Finzar. The top one is Finn's cam and the bottom one is mine. Well, I was editing through Minecraft. So jumping into multi-track here, the first thing to do is add the names of all the speakers. Then you can assign which speaker belongs to which video track right down here. Then just hit analyze. Now this process took about a minute and a half to do for a 15 minute sequence. Not bad. And once it's done, you get a bunch of parameters to adjust. First is the speaker switching frequency slider, which will determine how sensitive you want FireCut to be when it's, you know, switching between the different speakers. Next up is my favorite, which is automatically adding cutaways. With max shot duration here, you can choose how long a speaker speaks before it adds a cutaway. And the cutaway shot duration is how long your cutaway will be. You can also pick if you want FireCut to disable or delete inactive clips. Before we hit go, you can see the preview of what FireCut will do and how many cutaways it'll add. This looks good. 
So let's hit go. After you let FireCut do its thing, you'll see that your edit is pretty much done if you're just editing a podcast, that is. But if you zoom in, you'll see that the cutaways are still a little formulaic. As you can see, the time between each cutaway are exactly the same. So what I would do is I would suggest that you go through the whole thing in the timeline and adjust as you see fit just to bring a little bit more life back into this edit. Now, adding captions is probably one of the most important things to add these days to your videos, especially for short form. And Firecut aims to tackle this with one tool. Now, I have a project for one of my most recent shorts opened up here. And first, I need to mute any audio tracks that isn't me talking. And inside the add captions tool, let's hit transcribe. And by the way, Firecut supports over 50 languages, which is more than the built-in Premiere Pro transcription has. And it's important to note that you need to be connected to the internet in order for Firecut's transcription to work. On top, you have two options, styled and text only. The text only tab is where you can export the transcription as a SRT or VTT file. So kind of like what you can already do with Premiere Pro's built-in text panel. Now the styled tab here is what you're here for and what I love as well. And this is where we can create our animated captions. So if you scroll down here, you can see all the necessary options like changing the font, adding outlines and boxes. You even have presets like Mr. Beast. But the first thing that you wanna do is go into customize transcript and fix any words that are not accurate or misspelled. Now to get the word by word animation, let's turn on animation and choose which style we want. I like box text with audio. So I'll turn that on and choose the color of the box. After getting everything looking the way you want, you wanna come back up to presets and you can hit the plus icon to save this style for future use. And there's no limit on the amount of presets that you make, so go crazy. Now press add styled captions to sequence, and then Firecut will start creating a bunch of PNG files for your captions. And the reason they chose PNG files over Mogart files is PNG files are just faster. They don't bog down your computer when you need to render. And don't worry, just because it's a PNG file doesn't mean that you can't customize it later on. If you wanna change your caption style, just highlight your captions, and in the add captions tool, hit edit selected captions, and you'll be able to customize everything again. When you're happy, just press the add style captions to sequence again to apply the changes. To me, this is definitely way more convenient than my current workflow, where I use Premiere Pro's text panel to transcribe my sequence, then I have to export that as a .srt file, and then I have to use that SRT file with Mogerts in the submachine plugin to generate animating captions. It's just a lot of steps. And with Firecut's new update, you can add pop animations to your captions, which uses keyframes in Premiere's own effects panel. So you might be seeing more of these types of animations in the future. But at the end of the day, the animation may not matter to you that much because it happens so quickly anyway. But if you're looking for something simple that's packaged all together in one space like Firecut, it's definitely the way to go and it's a lot more convenient to use than other tools that are on the market. So overall, is Firecut AI worth it? Of course, there are a lot of features that are in beta right now that I haven't covered that are coming soon. But based on these features alone, I could see it coming in a lot of handy, especially because it is developed by Ali Abdal, the famous YouTuber who has a lot of talking head videos. So if you film a lot of talking head videos, Firecut can definitely speed up your process. And because it's also developed for YouTube editors, they wanna listen to what you need to help speed up your workflow. So a lot of the new tools that are in beta are based on the needs of the current editors who edit for YouTube. And just the multi-track tool alone for editing video podcasts is enough to make this plugin worth it. And don't forget that this plugin uses AI to get all these features working, which means you need to be connected to the internet in order for it to work. If Firecut AI seems like a plugin that you want to use, you can use my code GAL at checkout to get 10% off and my affiliate link is just right down below. Other than that, remember to stay creative and keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye.